Okay. There was a lot in this video that is not recorded. Um, I'm going to basically just put a little video together so you see what I'm doing and where I'm at with that motor that is literally driving me insane. But no, seriously, um, I didn't video a lot of it because I was getting frustrated with it. It's a hassle because honestly, I'm just putting the same thing up on YouTube again of me not getting it working. Something's wrong with it as far as it's not getting fuel. So the reason I took the motor completely apart is I'm thinking that there's got to be a leak somewhere that I just don't see. It's getting air. It's sucking air in more than the fuel it's getting in because the way it sounds when it's running, it's boggy. Like it doesn't have any power and it's just barely getting going. And that is usually to do with not enough fuel because it's got spark obviously um, otherwise it wouldn't start and it has fuel the mechan the carburetor is mechanical there's nothing clogging it it is a stock carburetor on a stock motor mostly stock motor it, it should work I've done this many times on other motors and it always works so there's something wrong with the motor that I don't know. So I went through the whole motor, ripped it apart, put new gaskets on it. Um, in this video also, I show you how to make gaskets. Um, I made an intake gasket. Now the outer, it sticks out, the gasket's bigger than the stock gasket, but they use presses and they're able to cut the edge. Now you could set it down after you cut the inside. Always cut the inside first, then cut the outside. What I'd recommend if you want the exact shape is you cut the inside with a bigger piece and then you flip it upside down, push down hard and cut it out with a razor or something so you get the outside edge. The inside edge is the harder part to cut because you gotta have a template. Can't use a template. Only other thing you could do is maybe get some um, shoe polish, lay it on the edge and then press it down so you have an exact stencil of where to cut. But even then you're relying on a, a steady hand to cut a round circle or a super finite, finite edge that is really hard to cut. Like, cause gasket materials, what, about 16th of an inch? Um, depending on the one you get, it could be an eighth of an inch. Um, it's, it's not easy to cut, even with the sharpest X-Acto blade. It's very hard to do. But with the way I do it, uh, my grandfather taught my dad and my dad taught me, um, with a ball peen hammer, flawless you see in it it's the exact size of the intake port super simple um and the holes i didn't realize it when i was videoing it because i had the phone in my pocket to catch it but the the port when you when you're doing the the holes it's what i'm using is an awl um an awl is basically an ice pick and you stick it through the center and as it cuts as it goes through it will pinch the material down against the other metal and the shaft of the awl will spread the material out against the edge of the hole, which is metal, and the the pinch between the awl, so it goes all in the middle, and the paper's around the outside of it, and then the, a hole of the what I was doing, the intake, the, the awl pinches against the intake hole, and it cuts the paper, and it makes a perfect cut. So you get the holes exactly right. Now there's many ways to do that, but the, the hardest part, the holes are the easy part. Cause honestly you could take a drill and just bzz, bzz, real quick drill it out. And like clamp it together and just drill the hole out. It's simple. The holes are not the hard part. The hard part is the big hole. The thing that's a weird shape, uh, that's the intake. You know, it's got a, a round corners and straight flat edge and then a round bottom or something. And it's just so weird. How are you gonna get that? Well, with the ball peen hammer, you see how easy I did it right on camera. Super simple. You get the main part done. That technique will work with anything, but if it's something much bigger, you just have to be a little careful because you have to hold it from collapsing. That's why I leave the outside so big and I don't cut the outside because it helps it from collapsing, like from ripping and collapsing in. So with that being said, I'm going to put together a little video here and I'm hoping you guys Enjoy it a little bit so you see where I'm at. Um, with my bike, I was heading to Pennsylvania today and the clutch cable broke. So I luckily broke down in front of an auto shop because I was about 
It was about an hour and a half walk. I mean, where I'm going in Pennsylvania from where I live is about an hour, 20 minute car ride. Uh, on Google Maps, it's about a four hour, four and a half hour bike ride. If you're pedaling, I'm not pedaling. It, it takes me about two hours, two and a half hours on the bike, which is whatever. I have my Bluetooth in and I just listen to the radio, to be honest with you. Um, but since the cable broke and it was going to get dark soon and I wasn't going to come back, fix it, and then go back, I was able to fix it at the mechanic shop. I borrowed his... Um, I borrowed a pair of dykes, uh, needle nose pliers, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, basically, I tied a knot in the cable, cut the sheath on the cable down so I could bring the cable through because now it'd be longer. And I tied a knot in the end, hooked it around the clutch handle, and I put a lot of tension on the cable down by the actual clutch itself, just enough because it was so much play in it from the way I had it wired. Like, I mean, it was just a, you know, a fix real quick, and it, it just caught enough for me to be able to pedal the bike and get going again and get home so i ended up taking a brake cable off another bike that was just sitting here um i mean it's slightly thinner i will order another cable clutch cable um i have one i think in my storage unit to be honest but it is what it is. i'm gonna put together a little video and hope you enjoy it and it just lets you know where i'm at with the bike um i took the motor apart took it off the bike took the motor completely apart crank out everything reassembled it hoping that there was an air leak a gasket leak this motor is brand new it has like 10 minutes runtime on it real talk um except for the day my wife used it but it was running perfectly fine when she left so something happened i don't know what something i don't think it's the carburetor i will try my makuni on it or the oko if i can't get it running now after this if i can't get it running with all this done i'm just going to put the 50 cc back on uh, I'll probably put my 50cc back on because it's a single piece jug and honestly I put a lot of port work into it and the thing gets up and goes. Um, so I am going to try to put this video together for you and let you see what uh, I did and uh, what not. Alright, oh, uh, check out the how to make a gasket part because that is very handy. You know what we're about to do. Let's go do it. Yeah, a lot less snow on the ground. Looks way better already. again I had to get it going kind of fast to get it to run something ain't right something ain't right so uh I don't know man I'm kind of at a loss with this one like you guys remember but the other day i said you need to start making your gaskets with hammers it's just freaking easier i see everybody trying to cut them out do all this nonsense but i'm not kidding this is what i use to make a gasket all right let me show you real fast now i just cut this little tiny piece of gasket off all right guys you're gonna have to go in my pocket sorry i know it's not ideal but this is how you do it so it's regular Fellow Pro gasket, you get whatever you're making a template from. All right, I hold it like this, see? So I can push down, boom, done. Hammer, ball, ball peen hammer, smaller too. I don't know if you can see this, I hope you can, but see that black edge? That's the inside. So, just trying to get a rough idea so we don't go too far. These are very light taps. Edge. 
now that you got this hole. Right? Now that we got that hole, we gotta make the other holes. See, that's perfect. Perfect. Super simple. Don't stab yourself. Just find the hole in the center. You can tell when it cuts it because it goes all the way through. There we are. There. There we go. That seems pretty good. Let's see it. Anyway, I, I made a second one just so you guys could see how I did it. Uh, see? Same thing. I hope that helps somebody. All right. Test 974,631. I don't understand what's wrong with this motor. It makes no sense to me at all. So I completely took it apart. It still looks like complete garbage. The chrome lining is gone, but I can't see the chrome lining stopping me from it running properly. I had my other one lose its chrome lining and it still fired, it still ran. Chrome lining doesn't really have anything to do with it running correctly, as far as I can tell. Like, to me, the chrome lining would definitely help it have better compression. But I don't really see that keeping it from not running at all. Like, it starts up, but barely. And it only starts and then revs up very slowly. Like, it's just not getting any fuel in. Like, as if the transfer ports are not transferring the fuel in. So, I, I got so frustrated. I wasn't videoing anything. I'm sorry, guys. But it was, it, I kid you not, it was about the thickness of a, a, flat, um, a flathead screwdriver. Anybody know what ZMN80 stands for? I mean, I know it's the 40 millimeter stroke and all that, but do you know what brand it is? I have no idea about this motor. All I know is this motor is literally brand new. And when I say brand new, before I put it on and let my wife use it, it had maybe 10 minutes of runtime on it. The cylinder was bad. So I got a new cylinder, which it was the exact same one. It says even, it even has the same stamp on it. Z M N Z M N. There you go. The same as the, what you call it? Crank. So, Anyway, I took it all apart, and now I'm going to be putting it back together. So, let's hope for the best here. And once it's together, let's hope it just straight up works. I am going to have to make an exhaust gasket. This is basically... A header gasket for a 350 Chevy. This is what I cut my exhaust gaskets out of. I mean, it's not cheap, but being as this is a professional, like, real deal gasket for a car, when I cut it all out and dremel it out, it, this thing keeps its form. It doesn't blow out. I've never bought the O2... Um, we got a Highlander O2 gasket just because I never needed to. I always make my own gaskets. Um, I threw in a tutorial on how to make the paper gasket. This does not fit properly. It is jagged 
is all get out. So I am going to Dremel this out and make it fit properly. And I think I'm gonna start there. All right, I'll be back soon guys, thanks. Well, there you have it. I put it back together. There's the gasket that I made. I don't care if it hangs over like that. That doesn't matter to me. I also made this. It matches the port. It's not the most perfect on the outside, but it matches the perf port pretty perfectly. So I'm cool with that. I gotta tighten some stuff down. I still gotta put the ball in for the bucket guard. To be honest with you, I lost the little ball. It fell out and I don't know where it went. So I'm just gonna grab one out of my other motors. I got sitting around and we will go from there. But it is completely cleaned out. Like I cleaned it out. If it doesn't work, I am honestly at a loss. The only other thing I am willing to try at that point is taking the intake off and putting on my billet intake and putting on the Makuni, the OKO, PWK, whatever you want to call it, the other carburetor. And we'll try from there, see what happens. All right, guys, I was ready to go to Pennsylvania. I am in South Amboy, New Jersey. When you Google Pennsylvania where I'm going, it is a four and a half hour bike ride. Of course, it's motorized, so it takes less than that. But I ended up in East Brunswick, which was about 20 minutes, 25 minutes from my house. Um, to give you an illustration, to take a car from here would be about an hour and 10 minute car ride. So the bike is obviously a little longer. Now, with that said, I was riding and my clutch cable broke. I had another one, but I put it on my wife's bike, which is not running. So now I gotta figure out how to make another cable of some sort work so I can get going. I have a throttle cable. I might try to use that and just cut the end off and it is what it is because my throttle cable is good and I don't think I'm worried about that breaking anytime soon. Either way, this is a real problem. I have one, but it's at the storage unit. A storage unit from where I'm staying at is a good 40 minute maybe an hour bike ride so I'm not really trying to go there right now there's also a bike sitting on the side I might just try to steal I mean borrow like the brake lever or something the brake cable and uh, just use that uh, I would have videoed me riding out there, and I will try to video parts of it, but at the moment, it's hard for me to do that because you saw how shaky that one video was, unless you're in my pocket. I just don't have a solid mount. Like, it's just a rubber mount, and it's bouncy. I don't, I don't have a proper mount for keeping the phone or anything attached to the bike, so that's really beat. But I'm going to try to fix this real quick because it is getting, I know it looks bright out, but it is getting dark quick. I don't know why the camera makes it look so bright. Uh, it looks bright as hell. Looks like it's still daytime. Like the sky looks blue, but it's not. It is literally getting dark out. All right, let me go. Uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Alrighty. Now it is definitely dark out. You probably can't see it all, but can you see the action? working of course it's also not the proper cable it's a tiny tiny little head but it worked so tomorrow pennsylvania 
supposed to be warmer tomorrow anyway, so we'll see.